Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be a continuation of the Forsaken the Lord series. We're going to take a look at the book of Judges. A little bit of background here. The first five books of the Bible are generally called the Torah, which means law. And they're generally attributed to Moses. And they are Genesis, the beginning. Exodus, you know, Israel coming out of Egypt. Uh, Leviticus, which was the tribe of Levi, who were the, they were the priests. They were the servants of the Lord. They were the ones that told Israel, the other 11 tribes of God's law. They were the ones that serviced the tabernacle. And then you had Numbers, which is kind of a, a little bit of Leviticus and more of um, Israel in the wilderness. And then you have Deuteronomy, which is kind of like second law, which is more of like Leviticus. You had... Um, and then you had the book of Joshua. Well, when Moses got to where he could see the promised land, because he had been, did something that dis, was disobedient, the Lord said, well, I'm going to let you see the promised land, but you're not going in. So he's across the river and he sees the promised land, and then he dies. And what's interesting is, you know who presides over his funeral? The Lord. No man knew where Moses was buried. I got a Bible study on that. Well, after Moses took over, guess who carried the, uh, the ball, so to speak? Joshua. And then after Joshua dies, uh, then you got a lot of problems. You got the book of Judges. You ever heard of Samson? Samson was a judge. What was a judge? A judge was kind of like, sort of kind of like a king, the leader. Some of the judges were prophets. Some of them were, were prophetesses. There was actually a prophetess, a woman judge, prophet. Her name was Deborah. I did a Bible study on her. Boy, I've done a lot of Bible studies. A lot. Over 1,000 and counting. So, after Joshua dies... We come to the Judges, and it covers a period of time. Judges is a period of history where it's nothing to brag about. Let's just put it that way. So, with that in mind, let's go to... Judges chapter 1 and verse 1. Now remember, Joshua took over after Moses died. And oh, by the way, when you hear people do the sacred name garbage and they're trying to call Jesus Yeshua, well, Joshua, that's savior that it means basically savior 
But uh, they don't want you to know Joshua and Yeshua is the same basic meaning word. They want to hide that from you. Of course, they want to hide everything from you. They want you to actually think that the New Testament was wrong for 2,000 years. And only they know the sacred name of God. And you know what? Let me tell you something. You know what they say? How they say Jesus performed his miracles? That he took the sacred name of God and cut it into his skin. And that was how he was able to do his miracles. Magic. Yeah. Yeah, they teach that. And that's not some garbage I read off the internet. I actually read their books in a, the reference section in the library. Uh, perhaps you've heard of Ariana Grande. I don't know what her real name is, but uh, Grande means big. She lives down in the town that has a large you-know-who population. And in their library, at least in 1990... 91 they had those kind of books that you could actually go into the reference section and read them paper hard a hard copy you know rabbi so-and-so so I didn't some junk I read off the internet no I read it you know it's a thousand dollars for the um, Babylonian uh, tall mud remove an L and put those two words together yeah so Joshua not Yeshua Joshua you know what I trust the King James uh, translators more than anything today so when I start hearing the Yeshua crowd saying what um, the Bible solution to um, Nambla, I, I might start listening to them. But until then, they can go to hell. Verse 1. Now after the death, death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. Now, Judah was the tribe of the kings. And you know what country fits the prophecies of Judah most? Germany. Really. You wonder why there was World War I and World War II? Germany. A lot of kings of Europe came from Germany. More than any other single country. By far. It was the Germans that destroyed the... Roman Empire. It was Germany that gave us the printing press and printed Bibles. It was Germany that gave us Martin Luther. And would to God that Germany in the World War II would have gotten a Martin Luther instead of a the mustache guy. You know, it really saddens me that... Um, all the people think he was some kind of savior. Uh, no, he was not a savior. He was the destroyer of the German people. Now, let me tell you something. I knew people that had lived through World War II. My best friends growing up in Miami in the 60s, late 60s, they had lived through World War II. They were in Denmark and they told me 
about how bad the occupation was when Denmark was occupied by Germany, by the Nazi party. And they said it was brutal. Brutal. And no, they were not you-know-whos. They were actually some of the nicest, most generous people I ever knew in my life. And I wish I'd have done more for him when I was alive, but I never had much to do nice things for him. Nope, Germany needed a Martin Luther, and instead they got an, an Adolf who left the country in ruins. And if he was doing God's work, he would have won the war. But he wasn't. Name me a Bible college that he started. I'm waiting. I'm not going to hold my breath. Judah was first in war. You know, it took the entire world, almost, to defeat Germany. Seriously. Almost the entire world, half the world anyways, to defeat Germany. In, a, in two wars. Actually, in World War I, Germany was not defeated. They really, they weren't. There was an armistice, which is basically, all right, well, you quit fighting, we'll quit fighting. But, uh, yeah, not good. All right, so the, oh, and by the way, the Canaanites... If you don't know why God said to fight the Canaanites, God said to go into the land and kill everything that breathes. He didn't say go in there and send evangelists and tell them about the love of Jesus. Jesus loves you people, you Canaanites. God wants to save you. He's up in heaven wringing his hands going, oh, I want to save those poor Canaanites. No, he said kill them all. Why? The answer is Genesis 6. And there's idiots that'll try to tell you that believing men married unbelieving women and they had giants for children with six fingers and six toes. And then God said, kill them all. Or a flood. And then after the flood, kill them all. Yeah, I don't think so. I got a playlist proving that the sons of God of Genesis 6 were angels. And they did the dirty deed with women. And that's how you don't have giants with six fingers and six toes because believing men married unbelieving women. But that's the nonsense they teach you today in Bible cemetery. And then we wonder why the way things are. Church tolerates every kind of evil. And one day that evil is going to not tolerate the church. And the Lord's going to allow it. Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. You know why the, uh, they always try to get us to sin individually and as a nation? Because the Lord, they know the Lord will withdraw his protection. They know that. The church doesn't know that. Congregation doesn't know that. But they know that. Verse 3. And Judas said unto Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into my lot that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. Hey, yeah, you guys come with me and help me fight these guys, and then when we're done, I'll help you. Verse 4, And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Parasites, into their hand, and they slew of them in Bezek 10,000 men. 
And they found Adon Abizek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Adon Bezek fled, and they pursued after him and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Hmm. All right, so yeah, in verse 6 it says, But Adon, Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued after him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Let me tell you something. You cut off your big toe, it's not easy to balance. And when they cut off your thumbs, you, you can't hold a sword anymore. Well, I mean, you could, but not with any strength. It'd be easy to knock it out their hands so so verse 7 and Adana Bezek said three score and ten kings having their thumbs and their great toes cut off gathered their meat under my table as I have done so God hath requited me and they brought him to Jerusalem and there he died you can call it karma you can call it God's vengeance God's a God of justice Verse 8, Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem and had taken it and smitten it, smitten it with the edge of the sword and set the city on fire. And afterward the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain and in the south and in the valley. And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron now the name of Hebron before was Kirjath Harba, and they slew Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai. Oh, these Hebrew names. I'm probably slaughtering them. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir before was Kirjath Sifer. And Caleb said, now, I don't know if you're familiar with Caleb. Uh, Caleb and Joshua were the only two. Uh, they were they spied out the land. And they were the only two that came in with a good report. I think there was 12 spies, one for each tribe. And Caleb and Joshua said, oh, yeah, this is a good land. We can take it. We can do it. But the other 10 are like, Oh, man, there's giants in the land. We can't do this. I'm afraid. But that's another Bible study. So Caleb and Joshua were uh, pleasing to the Lord. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kirjath Sifer and take it, taketh it, to him will I give Asa my daughter to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Ash, Ash saw his daughter to wife. And it came to pass, when she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted from off her ass. I know, that sounds funny, but uh, yeah, a donkey, okay? She lighted off from her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wilt thou? You know, uh, oh, hi, how you doing? Uh, why are you here? What do you, what can I do for you? And she said unto him, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a southland. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. And the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lieth in the south of Arad, and they went and dwelt among the people. And Judah went with Simeon his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephath and utterly destroyed it. No, they went and taught and preached the love of Jesus. 
Uh, I don't think so. No, they killed the Canaanites and they de utterly destroyed it. They're satanic hybrids. Kill them all and let God sort them out, or the devil. And the name of the city was called Hormah. And Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof, and Ashkelon with the coast thereof, and Ekron with the coast thereof. Ashkelon was a place where the Philistines were, the giants. And Ekron, uh, I think the city was named for, uh, I think they had a god named a satanic god named Ekron. I think so. Verse 19, And the Lord was with Judah, and he drave out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. Do you know who taught who, who first dealt with iron in the Bible? The, what I call the law, some people call, I do too, the law of first mention. If you see a word or a phrase in the King James Bible, modern Bibles, you, it don't work with modern Bibles. They change the words on purpose so you don't make the connection. Devils they are. But if you look up iron, the first time in the Bible, in, it's in the book of Genesis. I think it's in Genesis 4. It's associated with Cain and his children. Was Canaan, you know, the Canaanites, were they named after Cain? Were they related? I think they are, but I can't prove it from the Bible. So it's just an opinion. But they had chariots of iron. And the first time iron's mentioned in the Bible, it's associated with Cain and his children. Well, not Cain, but his, his, his family tree. And according to the Japanese, who've been use, making steel swords for thousands of years, they said it was the gods that came down from heaven that taught them how to make steel swords. See, you take iron, mix it with carbon, and then you beat the, uh, the compound to get out all the impurities. Every time you hit it, it'll separate all the impurities. You know, if there's nickel or sulfur or you know whatever you just want iron and carbon and sometimes there's other metals in there that gives it characteristics but uh generally it's what uh if you talk to anybody that knows anything about knives they'll say oh yeah carbon steel man that's you know good stuff the only thing about carbon steel is it will rust and then that's why they put other, uh, like chrome, chromium, they put it in there to keep the steel from, uh, it help, that's, well, that's basically what you call stainless steel. Because it doesn't, uh, I mean, it will rust, but it takes a lot more. But carbon steel, good carbon steel, holds, holds an edge. It's not hard to sharpen and it holds an edge. But if it gets wet, it'll rust. You wouldn't want to use it as a diving knife if you were a skin diver. So, But yeah, they had chariots of iron. So, yeah. Verse 20. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, as Moses said, and he expelled thence the three sons of Anak. Anak were giants, people. Anak were giants. And the giants were like, uh, 
over nine foot tall. But if you listen to my modern Bible cemetery, they'll tell you, oh, well, you know, the Israelites were, 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 were like four and a half, five foot tall. You know, people weren't tall back then. But the Canaanites and the Philistines, well, they were full grown. You know, they were six foot. You know, somebody that's five foot tall, somebody that's six foot looks like a giant. No, the Bible tells me some of the giants were nine foot plus tall. They have found giant skeletons all over the world. The Museum of Science in Kentucky, Louisville, had a giant skeleton there that had been in there for like 50 years. They removed it. They hid it. I think they removed it in the late 50s. It had been on display for, uh, you know, 50-something years. They got newspaper clippings, black and white, on microfilm, microfish, whatever they call it. People discovered these long, huge skeletons. And they were in museums all over the United States. They're all gone now. They hide this information. Oh, they were just six foot three, you know, and, and an Israelite, he was barely, he was, he wasn't even five foot, you know, people weren't tall back then. Yeah. Go to hell, you devils. Go to hell. Verse 20. 21. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. They didn't get rid of the Canaanites. They let them live there. And then the guys are looking going, wow, look at that Jebusite woman. Woohoo! Yeah, I want me some of that. Next thing you know, your bloodline's polluted. Well, guess what was in Jerusalem during the Babylonian captivity? You had Benjamin, Levi, who was the took care of the, the temple, and then you had Judah, the uh, the king tribe. So you had, and you had the Jebusites and the Canaanites and the Edomites. And you know, the devil's children are always going to lead you into wickedness. Always. That's their job. And they do it very well. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. But the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. And the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. Beth means house, and El is a contraction, uh, means God. Bethel means house of God. And the house of Joseph uh, sent to describe Bethel. Now the name of the city before was Luz. And the spies saw a man come forth out of the city, and they said unto him, Show us, we pray thee, the entrance into the city, and we will show thee mercy. And when he showed them the entrance into the city, they smote the city with the edge of the sword, but they let the, go the man and all his family. So evidently there was like a secret entrance into the um, city. You know, there might be an underground way to get out, you know. Uh, what was that movie, Troy? Uh they escaped underground into a cave or whatever and then came out by the river or whatever. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I'm not saying the Bible says that. That's just 
you know. And the man went into the land of the Hittites, or Canaanites, and built a city, and called the name thereof Luz, which is the name thereof unto this day. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen and her towns, nor Tanakh and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Iblium and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and her towns, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. Megiddo. That's a whole study by itself. If memory serves me correctly, it's the uh, Valley of Slaughter. All right. Uh, let's see. But the Canaanites would dwell in that land. See, Israel, by not doing what the Lord said, is planting the seeds of their own destruction. Verse 28, listen to this. And it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. Put them to tribute. Tribute's just a fancy word for taxes. Yeah, we're going to tax you. You're going to give us gold and silver and, and we're going to make you work for us. And then when I the tax collector and I go go collect the taxes I'm checking out your women hmm yeah let me marry this uh, human satanic hybrid female she's really attractive and you know ladies you know guys if it looks good in a skirt you know God looks on the heart sadly guys do judge a book by its cover. I always give people, well, when I got older, I always told people, you know, I did wedding marriage counseling and stuff. Uh, I said, before you get married, find somebody that treats everybody nicely. Even the people that can't help them. You know, if you got a boss that could promote you and you're nice to him, that doesn't mean anything. What about the guy, uh, the homeless guy that uh, who's disabled and Social Security won't give him money or the VA? You know, do you know how many people I know got hurt in the service and the VA won't pay them? They'll give money to illegals, but our own people... Screw you, jerk. That's basically it. And, uh, yeah, sickening. But, uh, do, are they kind to them? Somebody that can't help them? Even, that's even in the Bible. Jesus even was talking along those lines. I, I'd be paraphrasing. But find somebody that treats everybody nice. That's good to everybody, because you know they're going to be nice to you. Chances are. Unless you do something stupid like I did when I was young. But Verse 29. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer. Is that an old Gezer? But the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Neither did Zebulun See, I lost my place. Verse 30. Neither did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahal Nahalal, but the Canaanites dwelt among them and became tributaries. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Acho, 
nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor of Ahalab, nor of Akzib, nor of Helba, nor of Aphik, nor of Rehob. But the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth Anath. But he dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Beth Anath became tributaries unto them. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountain, for they would not suffer or allow, for they would not suffer them to come down to the valley. But the Amorites would dwell in Mount Heres in Ahijalon and in Shalbim, yet the hands of the house of Joseph prevailed so that they became tributaries. And the coast of the Amorites was from the going up to Akrabim, from the rock, from the rock, and upward. Well, that is the end of the first chapter of the book of Judges with the introduction. You know, so, you know, people real early on, they lived among the Canaanites. God said to drive them out. Drive them out. Kill them and drive them out. But uh, sadly, few people realize this is the story of our ancestors. It is. People don't believe it. But I tell you what, what's going to happen is they're going to start noticing, well, when it goes full blown, there's going to be a group of people on the face of this earth. There, there's going to be a genocide against them. A certain, a certain group, race of people. And uh, that certain group of people is uh, becoming very scarce on television and commercials. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, they look like Jesus in Revelation chapter 1. Read Revelation chapter 1 if you want to see what Jesus really looked like. I love, uh, I love when people tell me, that's not true, that's spiritual, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, really? Yeah, they want, they want me to think that what the Bible says is just, no, no, doesn't mean that. It says that, but it doesn't mean that. It means something totally different. How about I believe the Bible and you people that don't believe it, well, I know who you work for. And one day you'll get your due reward. And uh, probably where you're going, you won't need a sweater in the winter. Let's just put it that way. So, well, you'll never have to worry about winter again. And there won't be any snow there. <laughs> so, yeah. Asbestos might be in handy, but I don't think they're going to have it. You know, so. Alrighty. Uh, so, what can I tell you? But you know what? I will guarantee you. And oh, by the way, somebody uh, told me that the word Arab means mixed. Think about it. Mixed. That's what the word Arab means means in the Bible God don't like mixing he don't like it 
If he all wanted us to all look the same, he would have made us the same. But he took one race and put him in Africa. He took another race and put him in Asia. And then he took another race and put him in Europe. He did that for a reason. One day, we'll find out why. Does that mean that God hates people of a certain type? I don't think so. But do you really think that God wants uh, tigers and lions to, to be mating? I mean, they can do it. They call them ligers. I think they call them ligers. But that wasn't, that's not really the plan, you know? The Bible talks over and over about not mingling diverse seed in your field. Because what happens if your uh, cucumbers get pollinated with uh, green peppers? What happens? Is there a, you know, if the genetics don't line up, it doesn't fruit. It doesn't, nothing grows. The seeds are ruined. You know? Tomatoes and jalapeno peppers. I don't think they they grow to, you know. So you're not supposed to mingle the seed. And that's in, uh, I think it's in the book of Leviticus. Or it's in Deuteronomy. It's in one of the, maybe numbers, I'm not sure. But it's in there. I've read it. Yeah. And... You know, people will spend hundreds of dollars for a purebred dog. People will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for purebred cattle. You got meat cows and you got milk cows. And then people will spend millions of dollars on thoroughbred horses. And it doesn't matter who your daughter marries? Really? Or what your daughter marries? Really? Not to the modern demon nominational church world. It don't matter. We're all the same. Yeah, we're all the same. I'll tell you what, people. There are millions of of walking devils on this earth. And the church is getting ready to face the greatest persecution it has ever seen in the history of this world. And the sad thing is, they don't even know it. They think they're going to fly away any second. And instead of being on their face, repenting of their wickedness, They're worried about the election. Why can't we get an election overturned and get old Donald back in office? Or we're going to take back the House in 2022. Or, uh, or we're going to honk that horns up in Canada. You know, the truck drivers. We're going to get our freedom back. No, you're not. Uh-uh. Let me tell you something, people. If they got to call in the United Nations troops, China, they'll be more than happy to put bullets into the backs of the skulls of every American that lives here. They'd be more than happy to. And let me tell you something. You know how big China's population is? China has four times the number of people the United States does. Four. And greater than 50% of China's population is male. I think it's like 60% or 65%. Yeah. 
Yeah, tell me about it. People think that... Uh, take a look at George Washington's vision. I did a, a video on that. And uh, the only complaint I have about it is it says he saw a female angel. There might be female angels, but they're not mentioned in the Bible. The Bible doesn't say there's not female ang angels, but it doesn't say that there are female angels. But he's, he, he taught that the entire world would come against America. From Africa, Asia, and flood America, and he, he, he saw burning. Now, I don't know how true it is, but you know what? It looks like it's happening. And another thing, too. He saw that America would win the war against England, which at the time, England was the most powerful country in the world. And a bunch of ragtag colonists kicked their rear end. He predicted the American Civil War. But the third woe is, that was the uh, first, second, and then the third woe looks like what we're coming into now. So, I'm going to keep my YouTube channel up as long as I can. And I think I'm going to abandon Gab totally. It's, it's a waste. The, the Trump turds and the frogs, whatever, you know, eh, whatever. It's, it's pretty useless. So, all right, well, uh, George Washington's vision is only, uh, I think it's like five or six, seven minutes. If you want to watch it, you know, do a search. I mean, I, I did a video too on it, but other people did probably better than I did. So, you know, they say the more things change, the more they stay the same. King Solomon said that there's nothing new under the sun. And there's a lot of people that married into the Canaanites. A lot of them. So, we don't know the half. We don't even know probably a, ten a tenth of what's going on. So, all right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. All glory to him.